Federal organizations work to solve complex problems on a daily basis. And ArcGIS has been providing spatial analysis tools to help you solve those problems for years. And then we've also seen Pyth the Python ecosystem grow, especially with Jupyter Notebooks, which have become valuable tools to design, develop, and document repeatable analyses that you can share with your team. So this led us to bring GIS to Notebooks, starting with the ArcGIS API for Python. And now, here's something new. We call it ArcGIS Notebooks. And they let you host a Jupyter Notebook using your ArcGIS enterprise infrastructure. Spatial analysis and data science then get tightly integrated in a notebook that's backed by server-based analytics. So notice the new notebook option at the top. We're going to select it to get started with this look at this exciting capability coming in March. And if you're not familiar with notebooks, don't worry. They're like a workbench where you can bring tools to explore and do analysis. And the first tool that gets loaded with our starting template is the ArcGIS API for Python, which gives you easy access to all of the mapping and analytic capabilities of the ArcGIS enterprise, which now includes standard spatial analysis, distributed geoanalytics, distributed raster analytics, and all of those components work with the data on your enterprise. Now we can also import ArcPy. And that gives you access to powerful fine-grained spatial analysis tools and let you invoke familiar geoprocessing methods with the data on your enterprise. From the Python ecosystem, we're also going to bring in tools like Pandas and Seaborn to explore and chart your data. And we can even bring in machine learning libraries like Scikit-Learn and TensorFlow. And all of these tools and components are managed by the new ArcGIS Notebook server. So now that we've loaded all of these tools into our notebook, we're ready to find some data on a complex problem, like air pollution. And we've refined the experience to make it easy to find the content that you may need for your notebook. So here's a layer of air quality monitoring stations and the necessary code added by the interface. And we can also find content from the living atlas. So let's find a layer of administrative boundaries that can help us with our workflow. And then using the ArcGIS API for Python, let's make a map. We're going to load our station data and visualize it in our notebook. Then we're going to bring in the Pandas tool from the Python ecosystem to make a tabular view of our, of our station data and visualize it from the notebook. One of the columns in this table corresponds to particulate matter, a type of air pollution. So to get a sense of the distribution of these values, we're going to make a chart. In this case, we're going to use matplotlib and seaborne. And this basic chart lets us see an extreme negative value, which actually corresponds to stations with missing air quality data. But they were labeled as negative 999. So we need to clean this data. And we're going to do it from the notebook by querying out the stations with that value. And now if I re-execute the code that created our chart, we see a much cleaner distribution that we can now work with. And to get a sense of how those values may impact sensitive groups like people with asthma, we're going to bring uh, information from the Environmental Protection Agency. These notes on particle pollution can help us present this analysis. And we can even navigate the web page from the notebook to get a sense of which air quality index ranges may be unhealthy or even hazardous to sensitive groups. So now we've loaded, cleaned, and documented our data. And we're ready to do a basic analysis together. We've also refined the experience to help you find the tools for the job. And in this case, we're going to run interpolate points, passing in our layer, our particulate matter analysis field, and our administrative boundaries, and establish an output name. And then we're going to use a Python variable to keep invoking the interpolation throughout the rest of the notebook. While the tool runs, we can also keep writing some code to load the output interpolation into the map that we created. And with our analysis nearly finished, we can start making our way back to our map and see the interpolation ready to go, letting us hone down on specific regions of the country where vulnerable populations may be affected by this pollutant. Now we're ready to save this notebook and share it with our organization.
and with our working group. Here's our working group page. Once refreshed, this ArcGIS group now has a new ArcGIS notebook item that our colleagues can open and continue collaborating. Let me switch gears now to a different problem for the Department of Transportation. This notebook is considerably more complex, and it has a lot more code. This includes arc by tools like density-based clustering and standard distance to measure geographic distributions at scale. But we're going to integrate those outputs with regression models that transportation engineers write using Python and scikit-learn. And this results in additional visualizations, additional research, and even more code. <laughs> but it ultimately culminates with a prioritized list of high-risk roads and recommended solutions to decrease accidents for each case. But really what's exciting about this experience is the chance to do analysis in the cloud. You can bring data and tools from ArcGIS Enterprise, but also from the Python ecosystem and from elsewhere. You can keep working on your desktop, your laptop, even your tablet at home. And then when you're ready to review your progress, it's as simple as sharing your ArcGIS notebook item with your group to make sure the analysis goes down the right path. And for me, that's when it all made sense. ArcGIS notebooks is a new experience that lowers the barriers to get analysis done. I can't wait to see the notebooks that you put together and share with us. <laughs>